Hey everybody, this is Blue. Hey, I'm sorry that I've been gone for a while. I've gotten a little sidetracked and I'm finally recovered. In the title, you're going to see Farmer Medicine. And what exactly is Farmer Medicine? Well, that is the medicine that the people that rule in, lived in rural communities went by. Um, not all communities had a doctor or a healer. And so there were traits that, or skills, I should say, that were passed down from family member to family member or handed down due to the type of work. Um, and in the rural area, most people were farmers, and so it is called farmer medicine. I do farmer medicine, <laughs> fortunately and unfortunately at the same time. It is this trait that I think many of our modern um, pagan witch healers are missing. They want to proclaim themselves to be healers, but a lot of them are strictly working on the magic or spiritual side of the area, and I think a lot of them are missing hands-on application. Now, I'm saying many, not all. I bet a lot of money that there are a lot of people that have some type of medical related business or job and they get a lot of hands-on applications and they are also spiritual magical healers. So this is the non-magical application of medical skills to heal yourself. My grandpa did it, my dad did it, and I do it. Growing up in rural Iowa was not the greatest. My dad was a construction worker. He got injured a lot. And if he got injured and it wasn't covered by workman's comp, um, he did farmer magic or rural magic, I'm sorry, farmer medicine or rural medicine. He would take what instruments he had with him, and he would take care of himself. Um, there were routines involved here. Uh, there was this one time my dad, he cut his hand open, um, and it was a good inch-long cut. He threw his t-shirt around to grab some duct tape and he tightened that sucker up as tight as he could using direct pressure to stop the bleeding. After a half an hour, he took everything off and he dressed it better and just to make sure that he got it to where it needed to be. And then a half an hour later, he would do a very thorough cleaning. The tools my dad had were his, was a certain pair of scissors that nobody else could touch, um, a white handled, white plastic handled paring knife, um, you know, and in many spiritual senses, that was his atome. Mercurico, methylate, neosporin, some gauze, that's what my dad had, uh, medical tape and duct tape. So when my dad cut his hand, you know, he was working construction. He was a pipe layer. I told my dad, why, why don't you go to the hospital? And he says, he can't. Because if the doctor says he can't work, he, he can't work. And if he doesn't work, we don't eat. And so he just looked at us and says, we're going to eat. That is the reason why my dad is my, still my hero. He'll always be my hero. But anyway, um, he would take um, what he needed and he would tape up his hand and he would go to work. I mean, that was a couple, he would put some thylate on, uh, a couple rounds on the gauze, and then he would uh, seal it up the best he can with first aid tape and then get out the duct tape as like an armor and he would wrap that around and he would go to work every day. When he came home, there was another procedure. As soon as he got done doing the hugs and all that, um, he would get out a towel, lay it out on the uh, table, 
and my mom would get out his little box where he had all his medical supplies. He would get out his scissors. He would cut off the gauze and tape. He would then get out um, hydrogen peroxide. I forgot about that. He would pour some right onto the wound, let it foam up. He would then clean it, and he would put a light um, gauze and um, medical tape on it. And he would then we would all then eat, and that was the routine until that injury was recovered from. Um, I seen my <laughs> one funny time. My dad bought my brother and I um, ice cream same um, sticks, the fudge sticks. Um, he kind of yanked his finger out, and it was sore. And so we had to eat the fudge sticks um, so that he could get the popsicle sticks. He would break them in half and then he would use them to protect his finger. Um, you know, the putting them in there, the duct tape, and, you know, it act as like a splint. And so then he could still do his work and his the injured finger would stay straight and be protected. And he would do this you know, taking it on and off, testing the fingers, letting it move when he's at home. And it worked every time. My grandpa did this. Um, my dad told me a story of that my grandpa was working on the old, old um, combines. And there was a piece of wire that gouged his um, leg. And it took a while for my grandpa to get away from it. But a co-worker um, came over and they wrapped up my grandpa's leg and all that. And they did the similar thing. And he, just like my dad, kept on working and, you know, they recovered it. I think a lot of the people that want to proclaim themselves to be healers need to have hands-on application. And some of the best ways, I think, is to talk to the old guys, talk to the old ladies. You know, we talk about how in the ancient days, there was the wise one, the cutting folk that had all the herbal lore. Well, these are kind of the same thing. They don't have the magic and spell work, but they had knowledge and they were able to heal injuries. So I think that many of our healers need to go talk to go to an old sorry an old folks home and talk to the elderly, talk to your grandparents, and see if they had to do anything that I'm referring to rural medicine, farmer medicine, um, because I think it's kind of cool. Um, you see, now, another thing that was passed down on my family side, on my dad's side, was the use of clove oil. Clove oil is the basis of uh, Anisol, the tooth pain killer. And so it was just well known on my dad's side of the family. If your tooth starts hurting, you grab some clove oil, put a drop on it, and pain's gone. This is medical information that is handed down from, you know, grandfather to father to son, to grandmother to mother to daughter. We need to learn this. We're so wrapped up in all of the um, stuff, you know, this instant gratification society and all that need to know right here, right now that we we don't have the patience to sit down and talk to somebody and learn the old-fashioned way. This was all brought on because I got injured. As I said, I follow farmer medicine, and I did again. I had a one-inch splinter go into my foot. Um, not a shallow penetration, a deep penetration. We could not get it out. I don't go to doctors um, for splinters. Um, I had to let my foot fester up for three days before it got enough moisture and pressure on the other side of the splinter for it to slowly work its way out to be pulled out. Um, 
and as soon as it was pulled out, man, the foot started to feel better. It's been healing. Um, I got probably four more days and it should be healed completely. Um, the reason why, this is also the reason why I haven't been making videos. Um, with this injury, you've got to keep your foot elevated. Well, it's hard to keep my foot elevated at my desk. And that's where my animation program is at. And so, um, I'm back because I can now sit behind my desk and not having to have my foot elevated all the, all the darn time. Um, my first aid kit. I actually have two of them. One I keep in the house, one in the garage for obvious reasons. Um, I have Neosporin, hydrogen peroxide, different types of gauzes, bandages, uh, first aid tape. I have a hand manicure set because it has the little scissors, tweezers, and all that in there in each of my kits. Um, a flashlight and one other thing um, let me peek right in here oh yeah some some gloves and burn spray oh and a nasal aspirator these are not magical items but they are important items we can't just go and do old-fashioned magic all the time we use the applications but we need to use some of the modern tools that we have to make it better has it made a difference for me? Yes. Um, this, like I said, um, it took three days for the splinter to be festered up enough to move. Um, my foot is now going through what I call the drying phase because um, I got to get all the skin to dry up from being festered up. And I've been pulling off some dead skin. Um, I now have on the side of my foot a little half inch sore that I got to take care of. Um, the bad thing on this was I tried to wear she regular shoes and with that being festered, aggravated. But on that, I'm doing good. I would like to hear your comments on this. Do you think that everybody should have some hands-on training and really until they have some hands-on training that kind of aren't much for healers? So anybody, anyway, any everybody, take care. Be at peace.